Severe weather is currently breaking out across the Great Plains of the United States. Tropical storm Ophelia is well inland over North Carolina and moving into Virginia as we speak. And we have two tropical disturbances, one being depression number 17 and our newly identified area of interest out in the eastern Atlantic to talk about today. So we're going to waste no time, guys. Let's hop right in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're starting off on National Hurricane Center's homepage. Tropical Storm Ophelia has moved ashore as of earlier this morning and is continuing to weaken as we speak. Maximum sustained winds in the center are now at around 45 miles an hour. Central pressure has since risen, of course, since making landfall up to 993 millibars, and she is moving north at 13 miles an hour. Conditions with this system are continuing to improve. Now that we are further inland, the rainfall rates are starting to slowly trend down. The wind speeds obviously have really come down since that little bout of intensification we saw prior to landfall yesterday and the tornadic threat is just about all diminished at this point and I'll show you exactly why once we get to the radar. Tropical Depression 17 is now present in the eastern Atlantic. Winds of 35 miles an hour moving west at 15 miles an hour. This is the same system we've been talking about pretty much all week that did cause some concern when our models wanted to trend it further west into the Caribbean, maybe into the Gulf of Mexico, but we've built up quite a bit of confidence over the last three to four days now. This system is expected to transition to the north, missing the Lesser Antilles, the Caribbean, and Bermuda for that matter by a large margin, thankfully. This should take on tropical storm characteristics over the next 24 to 48 hours and continue to slowly intensify before making that turn to the north and deepening down into maybe even a Category 1, Category 2 hurricane. We have a new area of interest out there off the West African coast as well. Our models have been picking up on this over the last couple of days too. This is anticipated to follow in hot pursuit of Tropical Depression 17, soon to be Tropical Storm Philippe and slowly get its act together if the shearing effects and the influence from Philippe in the future don't cause too much harm or foul to the internal structure of the system as it tries to consolidate and continue off to the west. Both of these systems are going to stay in close proximity of one another and they're going to ride out into the sunset across the Atlantic posing no threat to any populated area. In reality guys that's just about all I have to say about the tropics. We're really not going to talk too heavily about them so let's move on. Switching gears now, we're on Storm Prediction Center's homepage. We have an enhanced risk for some severe thunderstorm activity over Kansas, Oklahoma, moving eastward into Missouri and parts of northwestern Arkansas. I want to also pay attention to how large of a swath of potential thunderstorm activity we could see pretty much spanning across the heart of the United States. And this is a direct influence of the storm system we talked about yesterday, once situated over the northwest United States, bringing heavier snowfall over the higher terrain of the Rocky Mountains and higher winds and thunderstorm activity to lower terrain areas in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming yesterday. That system has segued off to the east and is now situated over the Dakotas, and that's the main reason we're seeing all this widespread threat for not only high winds, but large hail and embedded tornadic activity with some of these more organized and aggressive cells. National Weather Service radar confirms this, and it's nice to see that despite that expansive swath of highlighted risk areas from Storm Prediction Center, a majority of it is going to be in close proximity to the center of that mature system moving across the northern tier states with the Dakotas, parts of Montana still seeing some lingering shower activity and further eastward into Minnesota, Wisconsin seeing maybe an occasional thunderstorm or two but particularly isolated instances of showers, you can see that the more aggressive cells are into parts of Iowa and in the central portions of Missouri. This is where we could see the higher convective winds, the potential for hail and a stray tornado if these cells can start to rotate thanks to the heavy amounts of shear we talked about yesterday and I'll show you today because of the upper level winds in place across the heart of the country. Off the right hand side of the page here you can see tropical storm Ophelia still producing quite a bit of rainfall for the northeast and the mid-Atlantic states. However as I mentioned a little earlier in this episode if you look closely it really looks like a lot of the embedded thunderstorms, those tropical like convective indices have really started to trend down. We're looking at mainly just scattered showers, maybe a little bit of moderate intensity rainfall but all in all it looks like the threat for tornadoes has diminished pretty much to its entirety. We could still see some localized flooding because of how long these showers are going to linger in place but there are little breaks in between thanks to that dry air that's wrapped up in this vortex and has been that case for the last couple of days as it's made its way inland. There is still a clear center of circulation right over top the border of North Carolina and Virginia and that's where the concentration of our highest wind speeds are still likely with this storm as it transitions off to the north. So if you live in Richmond and just around that general area expect tropical storm conditions within the next few hours since she is moving at a pretty steady click off to the north. Now I thought this next page would be very handy to get a better 
feel for what's exactly taking place over North Carolina and Virginia at this time, and the rest of the area is affected by Tropical Storm Ophelia. This is the National Weather Service Interactive Surface Observation Toolkit. So right now, all these wind barbs, I have turned on surface winds that are sustained and surface wind gusts. So those numerical values you see on this page are current sustained winds based on the observation plot for that local area. So you can see the general consensus really is we're seeing elevated winds in the 25, 30 mile an hour range. Some coastal areas to the north and parts of Maryland and Delaware are still seeing tropical depression to low grade tropical storm conditions. And there are some gusts closer to the center of circulation of 44 miles an hour here. We had a gust of 38 miles an hour here. We had another gust of 36 here and another 32 mile an hour gust here. So all in all, we're starting to see that weakening trend. Winds are not going to be a threat going forward at this point because of the amount of rainfall we've had. Loose objects such as rooted plants and trees could also come down. Telephone poles and power lines could also come down if you get an occasional gust upwards of 40, 50 miles an hour, especially because of all the saturation we have in the low levels and in the ground for that matter, thanks to all the rain we've gotten in the last 12 to 15 hours with this storm. The threats are continuing to diminish though, so that's good news for everybody out there. Worst case scenario did not pan out and we are only continuing to see the positive trends as she moves further inland. Here's a broad overview of the half disk satellite shot. You can see Ophelia front and center on our satellite imagery here in that potent mature system over the Dakotas, creating all that chaotic weather for Iowa and Missouri and further northward into the upper and lower Great Lakes, Wisconsin, Minnesota for that matter, and good jet activity hanging out over the southeast as well. Went outside this morning and it felt glorious because of the cool air being dragged south by Ophelia and that dry air in place kind of letting the humidity come down for central Florida finally. What I'm currently fixating on and what I'm watching very closely is the amount of leftover energy we have in this general region here. This is not really heavily evident on our models right now and there really hasn't been too much discussion on it from official sources but with the amount of jet energy we still have spilling out of the north due south into the southeast we could see another upper level feature try to spin up and increase our rain chances not only for the state of Florida but for the Gulf Coast as well and if you look closely on some of our higher res models and in the upper levels of the atmosphere for that matter they are starting to pick up on a little bit of embedded vorticity and some spinach left behind after Ophelia deepened and moved off there's some leftover vorticity that could try to enhance a lot of this thunderstorm activity happening for the Bahamas South Florida and most of Cuba Jamaica and even further to the east in parts of Dominican Republic and Haiti that's all pretty much the same system under the same dynamics in the upper levels of the atmosphere producing such widespread phenomena we're looking up close in the Gulf of Mexico on the Euro model right now and you can see as we go through the very short-term future here comes that embedded vorticity couplet spinning up into an organized upper level feature I say upper level even though this looks like it could be something spinning on the surface but if I were to take you over to the surface level you're not going to see anything besides blobs of consolidated green areas i.e. rainfall so this is going to be upper level induced just like we saw with the initial phases of Ophelia before she finally developed off the Carolina coast this is all because of the lingering split flow jet energy over the southeast quadrant of the United States it is going to linger because we're losing that steering flow that took Ophelia to the north and northeast initially and this is only going to linger for maybe 24 to 36 hours before our next potent system can come in and kind of erase it from the pattern altogether. This is 48 hours from now, and as you go forward in time to the 72 and eventually the 96-hour point, you can see the introduction of our next trough axes over Texas, Louisiana at this point, but that vorticity couple it down over the Yucatan and the central southern periphery of the Gulf is already starting to wash out, so nothing dangerous here. Just mentioning that we could see our rain risks and our rain chances continue to elevate as we go through the back end of tonight and through the rest of Sunday day and into even Monday, Tuesday for us in Florida and along the Gulf Coast. So with that being said, we've pretty much covered everything to its entirety. We're not going to end the video just yet because I wanted to make mention of one last Hail Mary trying to be produced by the hurricane season of 2023. Now we've all heard discussion about something coming out of the Western Caribbean once again, maybe the southern periphery of the Gulf of Mexico. We're starting now with our Canadian ensembles. They were very good with this source region last time, so we're going to see exactly what they're calling for as of 12 Zulu today. We go forward in time and you can see that it is identifying an area of lowering pressure off to the right hand side. This is Tropical Storm Philippe at this point. Moving to the north, you can see everybody in the Antilles, both lesser and greater, dodging a bullet with this one. And it is anticipated to dodge Bermuda off to the east. So we see great consensus on the Canadian ensembles. And as you go through time, the lowering pressure trends over Central America continue and they want to try to slingshot something out of that general area once again 
towards the very tail end of the loop. You can see a blob of lower pressures moving into the panhandle of Florida, coming across the peninsula of Florida, and then something brewing in the very southern Caribbean towards the very tail end of this run. I'm losing confidence with this because what we've seen with not only the Canadian ensembles but other ensemble products for that matter is a continuous pushing this out into the future. And when the models do that, that means there aren't really a whole lot of dynamics in play to make this hypothesis into a reality. This was initially bullseye from the 27th to the 29th of September. We could see something come out. It trended for a few days, and that has since been washed out. Now we're seeing as late as October 8th, something potentially moving towards Jamaica, Cuba, and then into the Bahamas and the southern extent of Florida. I don't take this with a whole level of trust or confidence because of how far into the future we've suddenly pushed this, and the dynamics I'm going to show you here momentarily lead me to believe we're only going to have a small window of possible development of Available for anything that comes out of the Caribbean. The GFS has been very interesting for the last couple of days. The GFS has a natural tendency to want to fire something out of that Central American gyre, that area of low pressure across Central America. So I also take this with a loose grain of salt because the GFS wants to instigate development anytime we have that gyre try to reestablish itself. It's been proven climatologically that to get at least one storm out of that gyre setting up over Central America is pretty rare. We already saw that with Idalia. So to get a two for one deal for two 2023, it's looking a little less likely, but we're watching. A lot of us are. This has our attention. If you go through time, you can see that the GFS has actually really gotten aggressive with something forming out of the Western Caribbean and coming right across Central Florida for that matter. This has been trending up. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Over the last few days, I want to say it was Wednesday, Thursday, we had maybe three to five members highlighting something developing out there. We've gone up to as much as 15, 16 GFS members as of today, and 12Z continues this consistency that we saw over the last two days now. This started on the late in the day Thursday and has worked its way now. We're in the middle of Saturday afternoon and it seems like the trends are going up. I will say the euro doesn't have anything on it. The euro does not have anything on it. I'm not going to show you. The 12Z, 0Z did not have anything indicating development out there so I'm going to keep an eye on exactly if we start to see overlap between the two model platforms but right now Canadians kind of wishy-washy on something. GFS is up in the chances and the probability we could see something. Euro is not on board as of yet. So we have eyes on it, but we don't have a whole lot of confidence and we're not pumping out alerts or alarming anybody that we are going to see something. Because if something were to pan out, it would trend into the area of a Florida landfall. So we'll definitely keep you posted on that. We are watching, but confidence is kind of marginally low right now. I'll put it to you that way. Now, as I mentioned, there's only going to be a small window of opportunity for this Hail Mary to actually work its way out of there. As you go through time, you can see over the Caribbean, we get a very good anti-cyclone. This is the upper levels of the atmosphere all the way up to 200 millibars. And when that anti-cyclone sets up, that's what's really going to ignite any kind of thunderstorm activity with our Central American gyre. That whole anti-cyclone is going to create lower pressure down at the surface through its entire region that is underneath this clockwise spin right here in the atmosphere. You can also see it eliminates any bulk shear in the upper levels because of its presence. So this is going to be the ample time for a system to develop and it's only going to be out there for a very small window. As you can see as we get towards the back end of the run, we get a little bit of a tut low form up and push through the Caribbean and that's going to increase our shear, kind of move that anti-cyclone inland over Central America so we really won't see a whole lot of favorable conditions for a storm to pump out of the Western Caribbean. With that anti-cyclone, I definitely saw that there was going to be an influx of moisture, upward vertical motion is going to be there and our MJO is going to reposition itself over this general source region so the dynamics and the parameters are coming together it's just a matter of if we're going to get a disturbance out of that area of low pressure so we're watching it's a guessing game at this point we have good dynamics we have a favorable environment albeit for a short window of time so it's anybody's best guess right now Another reason we're seeing this increase in shear, especially over the Gulf of Mexico, you can see very potent shear out of the west across Florida, the Gulf Coast, and the Gulf of Mexico to its entirety, is because we have a really nice frontal system and cold air coming out of the north that's going to encompass much of the east coast all the way down to Florida, bringing us wonderful weather as we ring in the start of October in the good old Halloween season. You guys hear that? 
Yes, so if you watch over the eastern Canadian provinces, the northeastern United States, you can see that very dense high pressure begins to work its way south. This is in response not only to a low pressure that's expected to develop off the northeastern coast, but also Ophelia, she gets dragged east. She's going to help to influence that cold air and pull it further to the south. And where there's cold air, there's high pressure. And as you can see, as it works its way down the eastern seaboard, the southern extent of it is going to make it as far south as the Florida Peninsula. So I can expect we're going to have another frontal system working working its way through. We could see heavy periods of rainfall throughout next week, but once we finally bring October f into full effect, we'll start to see a cooling trend and fall will be in effect for us here in the Sunshine State. Very good news. I'm stoked for that. I'm sure you guys are as well. It'll be nice to kick out some of these more summer-like conditions and bring on the fall season, the best time of year in my opinion. That just about wraps up Saturday's segment, guys. We're going into the outro. Follow me. And with that being said, happy Saturday, folks. Thanks for tuning in for Weather Center. That just about wraps everything up for today's episode. If you aren't in an area dealing with bad weather, you should definitely take advantage. Get up, get out, go have some fun. That's exactly what I intend to do here momentarily. So we'll see you very soon for the next full segment. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.